my friends and welcome back to Sharon B Teaching. Today is day four of setting up my classroom with me and I hope you guys are going to enjoy tons and tons of footage of me organizing things because that's literally what we're doing all day. Um, yes. Same goals as the past three days, just kind of clear off the countertops, put everything into place, and find a home for all my supplies and resources and whatever else I have in this classroom. So let's go ahead and get started. So let me show you guys what I just picked up recently. I got this um, handy dandy little storage container thing from Michaels. It's actually like a photo storage container, but I thought it'd be really useful in the classroom. First, did I just break it? No, it's good. Um, for storing like knickknacks, well not necessarily knickknacks, but like stationary supplies. Um, I feel like it'd be really good for like task cards, dice, whatever kind of small items that you need um, storing in the classroom. Because I always end up storing in, them in like random containers like Ziploc bags and I just end up losing it or I just misplace them. So I feel like something like this where I can put everything together would be super useful. Store it up on a shelf like that and I'll always know where it is. So so I'm going to see what I can put in here right now. This is going to be fun. Let's go. Alrighty, so I have a whole bunch of these pens and markers and pencil crayons in the original packaging, but they just end up falling apart at the end of the day and I just wanted a storage solution that would last and not have, and I don't have to deal with broken packaging anymore. So I'm going to see how many of these items can actually fit in these boxes because I feel like they're a little bit small so it might be a little bit tight for some of these I might have to use like two boxes for some or maybe I'll just go out and get like a five by six sorry five by seven container because these are like four by six photo containers so we're just gonna see how many I can fit and then go from there oh my gosh do you guys see that that makes me so happy that it fits so perfectly boom look at that These guys, ooh, these ones do fit. Okay, okay, do you fit, do you fit all of them though? Ooh, tight fit, but I think we're in luck. Here we go, another one down. I really like these Crayola markers for um, making anchor charts with the children. They work really well. I like them and it's easy because I can just like grab and go if I'm making like an anchor chart and I'm like okay I need my thick markers and I just come here grab the thick markers and I am good this is making me so excited right now you guys have no idea drop my markers all over the place these are a little long oh oh my gosh they fit perfectly okay here's the challenge I do love mr. sketch However, Mr. Sketch are gigantic, so I don't know if I can fit a whole pack in here. Probably only fit like six. Mm, probably not the best use of my containers. I might just keep the Mr. Sketch in the original packaging. I don't know, but I just hate how they fall off. Well, they fall out all the time, so maybe I'll fix it with another solution. Okay, tell me right now, this is like not the most satisfying thing ever. Give this video a thumbs up just because glue sticks fit perfectly into these cases. So right now I'm just organizing one of the math bins I have. In here I have a lot of um, dice. I have a whole bunch of playing cards. I have some bar graph um, magnets and just some subtraction flashcards. So I'm just going through them, making sure I have complete sets of everything. If not, then too bad. That's life. <laughs> I don't know what to do if I'm like missing cards. I think it's okay though, because usually we don't like play games that require complete sets. So as long as I have like a sufficient amount, um, I think then we're good. 
I just want to share a really quick tip on how I like to store um, cards. I use these like little snack containers. This is obviously a Betty Crocker one. Um, little snack containers for storing playing cards because if you take a look, it fits perfectly and it actually fits a complete deck um, perfectly. And so I just like to use these quick little snack containers that I picked up from the dollar store and they just work so nicely. I also like to store dice in them as well. And everything just fits perfectly and it makes me so happy. So there's that. Oh, and maybe I'll show you guys um, what these are for another time, but I learned this from, was it from a colleague? I don't remember, I think it was, but I thought this was like the coolest idea. So basically what she taught me to do was if you're ever teaching like graphing and math, especially math, graphing and math, did you hear that? M-A-F, math. Um, the best <laughs> way to create like a big visual is to use these little bar graph, um, bar graph, bar graph magnets, okay? So every student gets one of these and on the back of it is just like a laminated piece of cardstock. On the back of it is just the magnet and then when you create a bar graph together as a class, you can write it on the whiteboard and then every kid gets a chance to put in their vote and then they get to put it on and create a bar graph as a class. And it's really cool. The kids get very engaged, very involved in it and it's a wonderful bar graph activity for math. Friends, I went a little bit too hardcore with the laminating machine, had a little bit too much fun, and I went on a laminating spree. I ended up laminating all my posters, my whole entire alphabet display, and it's all ready to be cut out. So let's do it. Okay, here's my little rant with laminating. It's great and all, it makes everything more durable, but at the end of the day, all this excess that gets thrown in the garbage is so wasteful. Like, just, just plastic sheets. No, serves no other purpose. It's just plastic sheets and it's gonna sit in the landfill for 400 years, and that makes me sad. So I try my best not to laminate things that I don't have to laminate. I ask myself, does it really need to last that long or can I just recycle it at the end of the day? If it's something like a poster that's coming off the walls and put and I'm putting it up every single year, then yeah, sure, I'll laminate it. Um, if it's like alphabet letters, yes, I'll laminate it. But if it's like stuff that is just for students that is kind of like one-time use, Paper, just recycle it. Really, there's no need to laminate everything. <laughs> I try my best to reduce the amount of stuff I've laminated, and I've actually done a really good job last year, so I'm hoping this year I can maybe find some alternative solutions that are more environmentally friendly, um, so we are not wasting so much plastic and just dumping just straight up plastic into the landfill for if we really don't have to. End rant. I have found the solution. So, Mr. Sketch Markers are gonna go in this pouch. I had this in my classroom. I had this for a while, actually. Never really used it, but now we're gonna make use of it. Two sides, one pack in here, the other pack in here. Perfect. Let's just hope they all fit. Uh -huh. What do you think? What do you think? So anytime I need to carry these around, for anchor charts, for using them for whatever, making inquiry mind maps, making 
um, I don't know, whatever you need Mr. Sketch for, I have them in this handy little pouch. Okay, pencil crayons, of course, why not put it in a pencil, uh, pencil case? Alrighty, so here I have a whole entire bucket just full of art supplies and I want to organize it better. And look at that, I actually have all these shelves that I can utilize right beside my doorway. And I'm going to put all these art supplies somewhere over here so it's easier to access and so much more easier to find things. So let's go ahead and do that. Damage has been done today. Counter space is looking a little bit better. I can finally see the counter now. <laughs> I've started putting stuff up there. And on this side as well. Once again, not organized yet, but getting there. Alrighty, so that is it for day four of setting up my classroom with me. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to Share and Be Teaching. I'll be posting my whole entire classroom setup progress until it's completed at the very end. So if you wanna stay up to date, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys next time for day five of setting up my classroom with me. Bye.